Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. I um, hope you're all really well. You are joining me today here to make um, a large pumpkin and he's hiding at the moment, he's here. I have a sneaky feeling that he might actually be bigger than this one um, because we're going to be using the um, pumpkin pack that has got a total of, I um, don't actually know how many grams of wool there is in there, but quite a lot. It's it's definitely a lot of wool and we'll be using every last little scrap, certainly of the, um, the core wool. Um, just to remind you, the pack makes actually about 30 pumpkins of that kind of size or even tiddly tiddly little pumpkins, whatever size you want to make. The instructions are in there and you can scale them up or down, but making a really large one got a few hints and tips of how to build a big uh, core up very quickly and um, it's a two-part live stream so you will be watching this today and then hopefully next week too. Remember all our live streams on YouTube are repeated on Facebook at 7 p.m. on the same week on Thursday so you can watch this again on um, Thursday at 7 p.m. over on our Facebook page and as always I've got Emma in my ear to um, share anything that I might need to share with you live as it happens there in the comments. So therefore, I'm going to have a quick look who's in the house today. Um, remember to give us the thumbs up, like our channel, subscribe to our channel. I don't know if you can like our channel, but anyway, like it anyway, whichever way. Tell people you like it. And um, let's get some more subscribers to make this the best ever needle felting um, uh, YouTube channel. And we've got Ashley there and Sandra, hello both, Gina, Rachel with uh, Daniel, hello, and Jane is there. Um, it is indeed a beautiful day, uh, Jane, here in Gloucestershire as well. It's like a second summer, an Indian summer, as they say, and um, it's definitely warm. So I'm lucky I'm sitting in a cool office. Um, I'm north facing, so I never actually get the direct sun, which is great for um, for live streaming and certainly for taking photos as well. Uh, Carol is there. Hello, Carol. Not so sure. Is it nice and sunny in Ireland, Carol? Um, Catherine is there. Bet it's nice and sunny in Bristol. Um, Gina says hot and sunny here too. Just come in from uh, weeding the garden. Garden. Um, Dawn is there uh, for the first time in ages. Welcome, Dawn. Welcome back. And Meg is there. Um, Erica from the Netherlands. Oh, from a sunny Holland even. So sunny there as well. Helen is there. Hello, Helen. Donna, for all the way from Scotland. I think you've had the nice weather. You might not have it got have got it anymore. Vampire Venom. Rose is there. Alison, in from Sunny Devon as well on holiday. Awkward Prawn is there. Pauline is there. Um, Pauline might be working on something entirely different, um, today as she's um, told me earlier. Liz is there, and. Um, oh, so um, Awkward Prawn says it's really hot here in coastal West Wales as well. And um, and <laughs> Emma's just cracking the flags here in um, in the northwest. Anyway, so this is the pumpkin that we're going to be making, and um, let's get let's get cracking. And as always, we have got a prize to give away, which um, is going to be this little fr friend here. What is it? What is it? Who is it? Who is it? It's our little hedgehog. You can win yourself today a little, um, a small hedgehog pack. So this is the pack that we do that comes without the tools, got everything in there that you need to make um, the this little um, fellow, this favorite little friend of all times. And all we want you to do is, is to share your pumpkin recipes with us in the comments. So do give us a good idea about some pumpkin recipes. I've got a really good one and I meant to bring in um, a jar of pickled pumpkins, which is my recipe, but I forgot as, um, as you'd expect. Pickled pumpkins, best thing on the planet. It's the only way I eat pumpkins. Um, you basically slice the pumpkins, and it's no different from pickling onions or gherkins or whatever you might be pickling. Uh, so you have your pickling vinegar and then you also have ginger. And ginger is really important. It's one of the uh, most important ingredients because pumpkins that themselves don't taste of very much, but the ginger gives it that extra little bit of a kick. And, um, and you eat it like a little sort of like a garnish by the side, like you would eat pickled gherkins or, or pickled um um, pickled onions or anything like that, like any kind of pickles, honest cheese sandwich, whatever. 
And um, it's it's a really, Erica, you might know this even because I'm sure it's a North German recipe, which sort of sometimes that spills over into the Netherlands as well, because that's where I um, lived for many years before I moved to the UK. So, right, let's get cracking. Bring this little chap down. Remember to put it in the comments. We win, we draw a winner, a random winner at the end of um, the live stream. We do this also on Thursday when um, it's live streamed. This, this, this live stream is repeated live on um, Facebook and then Somebody else from the makers will pick um, a winner. I think it might be Hannah again. She's been on holiday. I think she might be back. You get a lot of wool in this pumpkin pack. This is actually one of our best-selling um, seasonal wool mixes that um, we do. And you also get the instructions in there to make the pumpkins. Now, you can make all kinds of shapes of pumpkins. They don't have to be pumpkins. They can be gourds. They can be... Um, yellow they can be orange they can be something in between there's actually one hanging up that's more like a, a squash so you can make squashes as well you can give them faces or you can keep them just um, nice and natural looking entirely up to you so I'm going to just take this big lump of the core wool um, out and look at these juicy colors of autumn isn't it lovely? On a on a really sunny day, um, we are now um, heading nevertheless still into autumn. So don't be don't be uh, deceived. Though it's sunny, we do um, have the autumnal um, vibes coming already. And we've got some lovely curls there that um, that work really well by um, doing the, the the vine at the top of the pumpkin. And then you've got our variegated green. You've got our natural or um, natural dyed orange, mother dyed, um, our mountain sheep orange, you've got our New Zealand merino um, red orange, and then you've got our muted orange here as well. And then you can mix all of this together to get your perfect um, color match of a pumpkin. But I'm putting these colors down for now and I've got a big lump of wool here. Now this is our basic core wool. It is a um, it is a wool, let's just have a closer look. If you've never used this before, it's one of our economy wools, which means it is cheap and cheerful. It definitely, oh, I love the smell of sheep. It does smell of sheep. Now, sometimes people, they complain, your wool smells of sheep. Um, that might have something to do with the fact that it's come from sheep. Um, it's not a bad smell. Well, some people think it's a bad smell, but it's a really clean sheep smell, but it still smells of sheep. I can't help it, really. Um, some, some wools are more than others. I'm sorry, I'm sniffing it because I actually really like the smell, especially because I know it's a clean sheep smell. This is not a dirty sheep smell. It's a clean sheep smell. So it, it has also got some what we call... Um, VM in it, which is vegetable matters. It just means that the sheep have happily been running in the grass and in the meadows, and um, and so bits bits of these bits of the evidence is still in there. As we're using it as a core, it shouldn't really matter. It will disappear inside. When you're making something really big, you do want to have. A cheap and cheerful core wool because otherwise you're using up your best wool inside where it's never going to be visible. Now, if I had the choice, I would use the Lannan Ridge core wool any time, but it is definitely um, twice as much um, as our basic core wool. So do um, have all of that, bear all of that in mind. And if you've got bits and lumps like this, which is what I'm basically creating now, that's also nothing to worry about because what you do is you're going to now make a nice it's imagine um it's like an avalanche you have um you you have a start with a small ball and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger as it's rolling and you can do exactly that by rolling it so have a nice big sheet that you can sort of stretch out I'm using up the whole table here. It's quite a nice big sheet. And then if you've got smaller lumps and bumps, then you can um, already just fold them into um, a ball shape. So roll them into, um, as best as you can, into a roll shape. Now, I will give you a little trick. Because wool in general is not actually that heavy, you could 
hide a stone inside there. You could make it heavy or you could put a pouch of sand in there. Um, best The best way to do that is by using, um, you know, like stockings. If you've got a pair of torn stockings, just fill it with sand and then keep doubling up the fabric until there's no sand coming through. It depends on how fine your sand is. Make sure you're using a dry sand. You don't want any smelly rotten sand um, that then start, that will then not smell very nicely. So if you've got a, a ball of that shape. Now you can do two things. You can start stabbing this, okay? For those who've never needle felt it before, if you're working on a small project, I'm just gonna show you this. If you work on a small project, you roll this into a ball shape like this. And you um, you obviously, all you're going to do is, and this is how you might make the small pumpkins. By the way, we do have a tutorial of that on our, um, on our, um, YouTube channel as well. Oh dear, I've got my felting mats are far away. Okay, I'm just going to use the a little a little um, eco mat that um, you would find usually in one of our kits. You just use your uh, felting needle and you stab the wispy ends of that ball that you've rolled into your main shape to secure the shape. Now, when you've got when and this is basically how you start out, and then you sculpt it and you felt it a little bit more. But when you are trying to make a big, big shape, it can become quite unruly because your hands are not big enough to do this. So if you roll something up into a big shape like this and you, you're struggling to keep it together, you but you could, of course, felt into it. You can use all kinds of needles. You could be using these massive, big felting needles, which I will be using later as well. But you could, there is a trick. You can also use some yarn. And because it's going to be inside, especially if you are using all kinds of leftover wool that accumulates, if you've been needle felting for a while, you end up with lots and lots of wisp wispy bits of wool here and there. You can all put them together, but it will be really hard to put them into a sheet so you can roll your ball up uh, nicely. So if you want to, you can uh, use these bits and pieces, put them into a great big ball because you know you're never going to use them for anything else, and then wind some yarn around that ball to um, to tighten it. So instead of needle felting, you're actually making use of um, of a yarn to tighten it. Nobody will know what's inside. Only you will know. Only you will know. So give it, and then you can pull it tight and get a nice tight core. So if you are uh, making this heavier, then um, you by now you should have you should put um, a stone inside, and that makes a nice big shape. It doesn't have to be a pumpkin shape right now because we we will sort this out later. And then just tie the yarn um, off and have an, have sort of a very compact little parcel there, which um just going to cut that off. There you go. I've made I've made the start. So I've got a nice little um compact parcel there. We have got projects like this that we've made before. And uh, namely we did um the, the curled up fox, which um there's the technique is also in our book, which I should show you. I've got it somewhere here. Oh yes it's here actually. There you go. We'll just show you here overhead. If you haven't got this book yet, it's definitely worth getting. It's a little bit like a needle felting Bible and the a large curled up fox that is there uses exactly that technique. Um, we've also had him as a, um, we've had him as a maker's box. Ah, oh, there's no photo in there. That's annoying. Okay. So basically that it does use that technique, trust me. But anyway, that's that. If you wanted to make a larger, he's that big. He's literally a mini, mini um, size of um, a fox. I have a feeling I've got somewhere else this technique written down as well. Whilst we're on books, I will just show you the um, simple needle felts. Has got projects in there. This is the other book. Um, that we sell on our website. This one is um, written by myself and they come with signed copies and the other one is Sophie and my joint um, creation and they also come signed. This, this book is split into seasons. So let's go to autumn. And in here you have a little pumpkin girl. This is a little bit different to our current pumpkin fairy, which we've got our subscription box going, but they, they're really super cute. They look a little bit like that, like fat round little pumpkins with a head on top and arms sticking out on the side. And again, you can um, make them in different um, colorways um, 
use different color hair if you like. And uh, that project is here in the um, the making needle felted make a, making um, simple needle felts, as are the tiny little pumpkins there that you can make um, to go with your autumn, autumnal fall um, harvest. Um, harvest festivals, um, whatever you're celebrating, however you decorate your room. I used to have lots and lots of autumnal uh, little decorations scattered around for, for the children to, I literally brought the seasons inside the house. And um, and then when the time comes, you can add some conkers to it, some uh, color, colored leaves, make your own needle felted leaves. It's, it's actually, though it's not my favorite time of the year, it's a wonderful time of the year to make seasonal decorations because there's lots out there that's given to you for free by nature. And you can um, add to it by needle felting um, a few decorations to go with it. There's also the uh, toadstool um, boys in there. That's another really lovely um, autumnal decoration. There's a gnome in that uh, section of autumn. Apples is the right time for apples. Um, so you've got a little apple girl in there, um, which will go lovely with a pumpkin girl um, or boy. And then uh, we've got a hairy spider in there. And, uh, and um, I mentioned the norm and the autumn leaves are in there as well. So a lot of these things we've already have got as tutorials and you can just um, um, maybe get the book and needle felt along by looking at um, the book as well. It's really nice to have. Right, let's get back to our little, um, little sausage that I've rolled up here. So it's now a little, well, it's more of a, it's not a sausage, it's more of a, a parcel. Um, of a description and uh, now I need to add um, more layers over the top so that the pumpkin will become bigger and because I've got a nice base now it's much easier to work with that and roll the wool remember the avalanche build up the size of this by tucking the wool in and using the rest of the wool um, so that I basically end up with a big a big ball. There you go. Now, as I said earlier, you can use your single felting needle. You can use that to just secure the shape. Because we do want to felt this down quite a lot now, using a single felting needle is going to take a long time. Um, you definitely will need to use a coarse felting needle. So um, a coarse felting needle is probably a 36. And um, on a small scale, it doesn't seem to be so much work when you've got something small like this and you keep felting it, it just goes really fast. On a large scale, it feels like forever and it just takes a long time to fasten it together. So you can up your um, felting power by using multi-tools. Whether it's a three needle felting tool, I like this one because you can actually have the needles uh, make them longer. With here you restrict it because once the wool hits that part, that's it. And especially when you've got something big that you want need to needle felt and you need to go right into the core. I haven't even got a needle felting um, mat underneath it because I don't really need it for anything big like that. So it works really well to have a, a big um, have to have to take this extension off and let the needle sink deeper into your shape. E even then, it just feels like a lot of hard work. You can try your five needle felting tool, the clover one. The only thing that restricts you on this one is that the needles are actually quite short, so they will only sink in that um, that far. When actually, what I want to do is I need to get the wool to fasten in on the. Um, big ball that's inside. However, if you have added um, a stone inside, you don't want to sink your needle in too far because you're going to break your needle. Or you could use something like this. Now we do sell these on our website. We don't use them very often. They actually hold eight needles and um, they're a wooden handle. You can unscrew them. So if you need to take a needle out or um, replace a needle or you just want to use six needles or whatever, you can um, take the needles out. They come loaded with needles. They are quite, um, you might need a set of pliers to get them out or get underneath them. My fingernails aren't long enough. Get under the needle to pinch it to, for it to get out there. And um, so you get the needle out 
and then you can either replace it or you can um, just work with less needles so that that, that tool uh, you should ha be able to use it forever and ever the tool should not break even if a needle does and then you just screw the back back on really tight because that secures the needles really tight in the tool it is quite a dangerous tool so if you're using this you really have to go hell for leather and you really do not want your fingers under underneath it it's it's definitely um um quite a um, yeah, quite a quite a dangerous tool. And of course, Emma's just reminded me, and I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, you can also use the prim handle, which I um, I'm sure I've got here. Um, why did I not think of that? That was really bad of me. I'm normally the first one to think of it, um, but then it always sounds like I'm um, biased in any way or form, which of course I'm not. But it is a really good it's a really good tool which I can't find right now. Okay, I will come back to that. I think it's probably the best of all the ones that I've been talking about. Where the heck did I put it? Okay, I'm going to have a little think where I've put this and have a look in a minute. But um, so you've got a shape now and now you need to work on the shape. Now you can go with a natural sort of how it wants to be. You can, so this one looks like it wants to sit flat on its bum like that. And now I want to squash it and make it nice and round like a juicy plump pumpkin so I'm gonna have a look in a minute for my um oh I can see too I've got to get up and get that but I will just um also let you know what's coming up live stream wise over the next few weeks so you can um enjoy another part of the pumpkin um live stream because we have two parts today we're just getting the base ready and then next week we will be coloring it in and um and decorating it um with um a stalk and the vines and then um the the in on the september the 21st we've got the little witch coming up i think lots of people are looking forward to this we have sold lots of these little packs that go with the witch so um it's it's an exciting project and i'm really looking forward to her that's a one part um make along and then we've got the toadstool house over two dates 27th of september and the 5th of october and remember these are dates on youtube but of course they do get repeated on um on a thursday at 7 p.m on facebook and the little witch is here she's flying um she's practicing her flying skills and the toadstool house i've got one out and here's another one so people have asked, what do you need to make the toadstool house? We um, we have designed a wool mix, a new wool mix with the toadstool house in mind. And that is the Enchanted Forest wool mix. In that, you get all the colors to make these. Let's just have a look on at it overhead. You get, you get everything in there to make these quite intricate. Oh, God, I've knocked the camera. Sorry, guys. Oh, I've got to put that right now. All wonky. Um, so you get the colors to make the intricate little pebbles. They're actually a bit more detailed here. So you make intricate little pebbles. Um, you make the door with um, with the the um, rose bush going around and the gnarly roots there. You get um, you get the green in there. You get the curls in there. So you have. You have all the right colors in your um, enchanted um, forest wool mix to make the decorations. What you don't have in there is the core wool, which uh, you would need about 30 grams. And I would highly recommend the lanolin rich for this one because it's just so nice and solid straight away. And then in the enchanted um, forest mix, you get the variegated red, which is a little bit more of a dark red rather than the sort of bright toadstool red like this one. So if you wanted um, to to make it red like this, then you also need some um, some poppy red. Um, and I think you need 10 grams poppy red. So that basically is what you need to make the toadstool houses or ha house, I should say. One house needs 30 grams of core wool. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, to doing that with you as well. Um, oh yes, prim tool. Here it is. Yes. Thank you for reminding me, Emma. I have no idea why I didn't remember that. The prim tool. So the prim tool, when you get it, it comes without needles. And um, 
my camera is still a bit wonky. I really don't like it when it's wonky. Sorry, I've got to get straighten it out. There we go. Um, it comes without the needles. So imagine that isn't there and you have to put it together yourself. Um, what does it have is a single needle felting tool. So you've got a single felting tool that you can just use um, for stabbing into your wool. Remember, you have to load it up with your own needles. The, the single needle felting tool can become part of the remaining um, needles, which then makes it um, a six needle felting tool. Is that correct? Two, four, six, seven needle felting tools. So there are six needles in there plus the one in the middle makes it seven. And um, what I like about it is it has got this ergonomic handle, which you pop here at the end and you can hold this really comfortably in the palm of your hand, especially if you've got problems um, maybe with your hand joints and holding something tight like that it does hurt. You can leave that in the palm of your hand and that is, that is the bee's knees. It definitely felt the fastest and the best. So if you um, want to invest in a nice, in a nice good quality, long lasting, um, felting tool that does work large surfaces comfortably and you can double it up to work on small projects as well then this is the one for you maybe all of them are for you they all have their uses especially if you like um, collecting um, tools and having the right things ready for the right time um, what I also like about this you can put the handle on the other side and that makes it a really um, safe tool now to transport. What I, further, what I like about it, it does stand, but if you knock it over, um, and it and you and it rolls towards your the edge of your desk, it actually rolls in a circle. So it, unless it's really close to the edge, it 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 sort of it it goes in a in a in a loop before it come before it rolls off your off your desk so it is a I think it's an all-around really good tool and it's made by Prim and we do sell this one as well right I'm going to have a quick look now how everybody's doing because this is sort of a the first part is a little bit tedious with just getting the shape of this pumpkin felted down and making you know f making it a nice a nice solid shape and getting it into um, the sort of plump shape that you might want or maybe you want a long shape it's that's entirely up to you how you're going to shape this but let's have a look who's um, who's giving us um, good pumpkin recipes haha <laughs> I might um, do other things than pickled pumpkins um, Carol says it's hot and sunny here in Ireland too okay um, Pumpkin chocolate chip bundt cake. Ooh, that sounds nice. Um, anything with chocolate sounds nice, to be honest. Um, Ashley says, only thing I know would be to add in homemade dog biscuits. Oh, you're putting pumpkins into homemade dog biscuits. That's really good because I didn't know that pumpkins are so incredibly nutritious. They look, they have such a bland taste, but they're actually full of um, vitamins and um, and other things that are really good for you. I've forgotten what that is. Um, Pauline says, yes, sorry, finishing off my leopard. Yes, uh, I'm all behind due to visiting grandchildren. First time I've had a chance to watch you in ages. That's okay because we all need the summer holidays and it's probably quite nice to get a break from me. Donna says, pumpkin muffins are yummy. Uh, you know what's going to happen. We're going to write, I'm going to write to all of you and say, can you please share the recipe? Vampire Venom says, I use pumpkin squash in the base for veg soup. Oh yeah, that is true. Stock veg pumpkin squash and whatever veg you can get like boil for a few hours season to taste can use smoked salt water and blitz excellent i love a good old soup when it gets colder gina says i make pumpkin soup and i have also made pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread in the past i've never had pumpkin bread but it's it's a very un-german um, vegetables so you know when when you guys um carve pumpkins we actually in germany we carve um oh, what is it called again now it's an animal feed it's like a swede i think it's it's like a big swede erica help me because i'm sure you do this too in the netherlands um it's a big it's like a really rock solid root vegetable um that hasn't got a soft core like a pumpkin and it's um it, it looks sort of more like the shape of a head. It's more oh, it's more oval and um, rather than, you know, fat and squashed. And um, and it is an animal, 
an animal feed. So um, I, I, as a child, I saw the um, the farmers going across the field in the winter and and taking or in the autumn and taking them all off the field and have like massive big trailer truck um, tractor trailers filled with um, with this Sweden. I just cannot remember what it's called. Ah, it'll come to me anyway. Um, so. I just add pumpkin to soups and stews or even sometimes stir fry, says Pauline. Um, pumpkin seeds and homemade bread. Yummy. Excellent. My pumpkin pack is on its way. Nice one, Gina. Pumpkin curry. Um, Leslie's just joining in. Leslie, if you're wondering what all this pumpkin talk is about, we want you to tell us your uh, best pumpkin recipe for a chance to win a pack to make this little... Um, spiky friend so do do tell us what your best pumpkin recipes are and emma will um choose a winner and on thursday over on facebook i think it will be hannah who is choosing a winner then um i'm not a pumpkin fan says dawn usually just buy for my grandson to calf last year they did 10 <laughs> i think you are a pumpkin fan <laughs> you might not eat it but still um, Vampire Venom says, um, Dawn, I haven't carved pumpkins in years. I ha make pumpkin-free displays. One year was doll's heads. Another, I used a face cast to make faces to hang up spiders and demonic, 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 I don't know how to pronounce this, um, door one year, graveyard, etc. You know, when we were talking about pumpkins, I was thinking of like, happy pumpkins and then when you said you're making doll's head I suddenly thought oh that's really spooky and then I thought well that is the time of of being spooked so um yes of course let's let's um let's shift a gear here and it is about the spooky time coming up um Sandra says oh no that um oh no that's right she's also not a, a pumpkin fan and haven't carved one either used to carve turnips ah that's it it's a turnip it's a big turnip that's it um, and Emma, if you've just said something to me, I didn't hear it because I was too excited to move about turnips. Donna said, uh, one year, my guide unit were having a party. The girls really loved watermelon mocktails. I just carved the watermelon instead of a pumpkin after using the flesh for the mocktail. That's a good idea. Um, a water, mind you, you don't get so many watermelons, um, say in October anymore in the shops. Um, so we decorated the fence and gate last year so that the children could do a tour of the hamlet and a treasure hunt due to lockdown. This year, I hope to make a giant spider climbing over the hedge, says Awkward Prawn. I can feel another topic coming on here um, for a, um, a giveaway next week. Um, tell us your spookiest garden decoration for Halloween or a spookiest decoration. Oh, we've got the fighting felter. My recipe would be an iced pumpkin spiced latte. Mmm, that sounds nice. Um, so, uh, oh, um, uh, she also says that she's from the northeast, and I remember the Swedes too. So it's not just a, a German thing. Then I, I definitely used to, um, t um, do the turnip thing. Um, Ava has just joined. Hi, Ava from um. Is it Sweden or Norway now? I can't remember. Anyway, from Scandinavia. Um, love the toadstool house, says Pauline. And Diana says, I haven't tried it yet, but I would like to try a pumpkin pie. Does nobody like my pickled pumpkins? Come on, guys. Somebody must have had these before. Uh, best needle for best needles for prim tool. Are you asking, Ashley? So the best needles for prim tool, I would say start out with a medium because um yeah i think they're good but if you're really if you're always working on large projects then maybe maybe have um have coarse ones in there i definitely wouldn't put fine ones in there talking of which i'm here to needle felt um and i've just remembered that that's what we're here to do so i'm going to keep stabbing this uh, construction that needs a lot of stabbing you can also um of course tie the center bigger so you have a um, a fir more firmly tight center and then just cover it with a thinner layer of the outer wool so you you haven't got so much squishiness in there as I did but I'm just going to give it a few steps now because I haven't done I haven't made I haven't needle felt it very much and I'm so glad that Emma mentioned the prim tool because for some reason it completely flew out of my mind and it's definitely the best for um, getting this into shape 
So I'm going to I'm, I'm adamant to make a nice squashy pumpkin, like a like a flat flat squashy one, rather a tall um slim one. That's my idea. Oops, things are falling off my desk here as I'm stabbing. Um, mm, pumpkin shake is my favorite. Um, my housemaid makes a lovely mixed rose veg with pumpkin squash. Nice. Um, and Ava says, I only use pumpkin for decorations. Have you ever heard that pumpkin is a wormer for goats? Ooh. I'm not sure if it's true. <laughs> well, well, I have no idea. As I don't have goats, no worms, I probably will never find out. But um, for those who have got goats with worms, preferably, then um, try it and let us know next time. Um, have... Um, and Ava says, hey, hey, she's from Norway. That's right, but it's okay. Um, can't remember us all. Oh, I'm, I'm, but I do, I'm so pleased that I always remember it all. But um, anyway, right. I am, so there's one thing that I I'm, I think I do slightly different from a lot of needle felters is that I often don't, I don't finish the shape with a core. Um, I, I just make sure it's a nice firm shape. Um, but there's still a lot of give in there. So when I start decorating it, there is, isn't is really, it hasn't really got the shape, the proper shape yet. That's what I'm trying to say. Because I I think you can do all of that by um, when you start decorating it, as long as the shape is firm enough so that it still has some potential to firm up once you start putting the outer decoration on it. But I quite like it when it's, um, or... Oh, I don't need it to look like a pumpkin in white yet, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to needle felt the grooves into it. I'm just going to felt it so that it, the basic shape is complete. And that's how I um, like felting most of my creations. I know there are other people who make the perfect shape with the core wall and then they just literally color it in. Um, that's just a preference. So if you feel strongly about this, um, that you can't possibly start coloring in a shape when it hasn't got the right um, the right shape in itself already, even though it's like a ghost pumpkin, then um, you can do this before uh, the next live stream. Feel free to do that. But if you're happy to, to take it a little bit more as you go and allowing the shape to emerge as you are adding the surface color onto it then that's what I'm going to do and um, adding the surface color we will do next time um, but I'm still what I'm doing is I'm making the pumpkin nice and squat if um, you have some um, cracks in the pumpkin or you have some unsightful um, shapes so say for example I just go overhead um, with the camera here so for example here I've got a, a ridge there and the more I stab it, the more it will become a ridge because it's just sort of like, you know, folding over on itself. You can tease the wool open again just because it's felted. Doesn't mean to say that you haven't got the chance to tease it still. And then just fold that flap over where you want to cover up um, your um, unsightful bits and just felt it down. So you can cover up cracks if you've got spare um, core wool you could have used just a spare core wool but um, it's it's nothing's ever um, set in stone it's only ever set in wool and there's a lot of uh, scope to change things and um, I had another thought in my head um, oh, what was I gonna say oh, I can't remember now anyway obviously it wasn't that important it, it will come back Right, so I'm going to just quickly share some other bits and pieces with you while um, whilst you're stabbing away on your pumpkin. It's coming up, coming on nicely. And remember that when when I color it in, I've got I will start always at the top, so that will naturally be squished down, and then um, I work in that direction of the shape from from next week on when I'm. Um, decorating it so I think it's a really nice shape incidentally this is also how you would start out to make a large Christmas pudding if you um, if you wanted um, a large Christmas um, table decoration we have got a large Christmas pudding and um, when we take it to shows 
as a decoration, lots of people have offered us money for it. And I always say, no, make your own. Go away and make your own. That's what I say. Right, what else can you make your own? We have just launched a puppy maker's box a few days ago. Um, if you're not a subscriber yet, this is a great beginner's one. It makes a, a whole puppy, really cute, super cute little puppy. Um, there's no wire inside, it's all wool, and um, you get to you get the felt sheet to make a nice, a nice comfy um, rug for him as well. Um, it took me ages to put him on there now. I can't do it again. Oh dear, oh dear. You have no idea how long it takes to make set up this set, and then um, and then I destroy it. He's not going to stay there now, is he? Oh well, he'll have to stay like that. Um, we have also launched our um, Mr. and Mrs. Tompter, and um, they are really they're really weighty because I have put a stone inside, and there is Mrs. Tompter in case you hadn't spotted her. So you can buy now um, um, each of them as a as a pack to make them. This is also going to be a live stream coming up. So um, either storm ahead and make it yourself because the instructions will be part of it or wait patiently until it's their turn. Um, the Pumpkin Fairy is our um, September um, Fairy Box subscription. You can also buy the Fairy Boxes as a one-off on their own. And um, I love these little bamboo baskets. They're just super cute. And you could make tiny little pumpkins, even smaller than these, to go inside and have them as part of your um, uh, decorations. And um, what else have I got? Oh, yes, the, 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 the elves. They are, um, there's two of them in our pack. They are also doing really well. And um, we've just decided that we will actually, well, we think we're going to make them as a, into a live stream. How do you feel about it? If you want to see the live streams, uh, if you want to see the elves as a live stream, then just pop a comment into the into the live stream here now and let us know if you would be interested in watching them done um, as a make along in a live stream. Because I think they deserve to be in a live stream, so that would be nice if they could um, could appear. So let us know if you are up for that. And um, and then the other thing, the other exciting news that I can share with you is that our Advent project is now live. Now we have sold um, over half of um, the stock already. Um, the Advent project is usually one that you can't, um, it's something that you make from beginning to end and you end up with a finished project. Ad unlike our Advent calendar, which have just got... Um, 24 individual parcels that you open and they um, they're not necessarily uh, connected to each other but they're all suitable for needle felting um, or can be incorporated with your needle felting projects the advent project is a finished full project that you make from beginning to end and we support that with live streams leading up to Christmas so we we will show you how to make each step you don't know from week to week what you're doing next and you don't see the finished project um, until you get really close to the end so there is a level of trust that you have to have in us but of course you trust us because we're nice and we've never let you down and um, so you can now get your advent project if you haven't um, got it yet and it um there there it is it's called animals in the wood it's an advent needle felt pack it's 30 pounds you can pre-order it now all i will say is please 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 don't add anything else to this particular order because we can't hold those items for you we just have, don't have the space um and we're not posting this animals in the wood Advent needle felt pack out before the uh, before the end of October. So you will get it in plenty good time to start on the first of Advent, which is usually a Sunday. But we can't add any other products into the order. So if you if you want to order it, order it on its own. And then if you want other bits, you have to place a second order because there will be two parcels. The Advent project will be sent out just by itself when when the time comes nearer. So, and of course, if you have both the Advent Calendar and the Advent Project, you're definitely in for a treat. Um, so that's very exciting. Treat yourself leading up for Christmas and um, 
and we will be there by your side to support you as best as we can and and with hopefully not too much taking too much time um, up on your side because you might be very busy getting ready for Christmas. Hopefully we'll all have a good Christmas this year um, where we where we can do whatever we like. Not not that yeah that's it. Not saying anything else. So um, this the top part of my of my um, pumpkin is getting quite firm. I've got to work a little bit more on the squishier bottom part. So I'm turning it the wrong way around now, I'm just flattening the base a little bit more so it can stand nice and comfortably and keep stabbing all around. Unfortunately, it's, it's a little bit boring to show you um, <laughs> over the, the overhead camera. All you see is this white ball that's bouncing up and down because I'm stabbing it. And um, I'm hoping to read a few more comments here. Um, oh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, oh, Ashley says, I love uh, the face on the small pumpkin besides the witch. Small pumpkin. Oh, this one here. Um, which one is it? Is it, is it, is it this one? No beside the witch because there there's actually a lot of space between the witch and the pumpkins i think you mean this one he's he looks quite innocent and cute some of these pumpkins have got um very naughty faces this one here has got green snot running out of his nose um so some of them look a little bit more grumpy some of them look quite happy um i am going to do a pumpkin uh, demonstration on Saturday the 18th of September as part of the uh, original Needle Felting UK Autumn Festival. Um, there is a group out there that you have to ask to join. This is not just the ordinary uh, Needle Felting UK group. This is a subgroup that will is just made to support lots and lots of demos all day. And I've got the last slot at 5 p.m. So that's the 18th of September, um, where you can watch me live showing you how to make a small version um, of this pumpkin and giving him a naughty face as well. So, oh yes, I was reading the comments. Um, ooh, peanut, uh, pumpkin peanut butter dog treats. That sounds nice too. Um, we roast pumpkin seeds and eat them as a treat. The best are in smoked paprika and salt shake. Wow. Um, Marsha, hello Marsha. She says, use one box of spice cake mix and add one can of pumpkin. Mix together to make pumpkin muffins. No other ingredients are needed. Great recipe. Bake at 325 for 20 minutes. Now 325 is Fahrenheit. I do know that. Um, pumpkin, um, tinned pumpkin. Do we get that in the UK? I've never seen that anywhere. Um, yes, it's maybe it's an American thing. I've not. I, I, in all honesty, I've not seen tinned pumpkins. Susan says, my grandmother's pumpkin bread, similar to a banana bread, but with pumpkins. Delicious. Pumpkin is huge here in New England. Oh, nice. Um, Donna says, yes, please, live elves. Um, Rose says, yes, to live stream. Um, Diana says elves would be good to see. Ava says yes, please. Jane says that sounds a lovely idea, please. Awkward prawn, yes, elves. Gina Ash says, uh, sorry, mentioned your surname there. Yes to the elves. Alex says yes, elves. Dawn says yes to elves. Um, okay, I think that's quite convincing to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, so Rose says, yeah, I made that mistake of adding stuff. So sorry, fixed now, I think. Okay, I've no idea what you're talking about. Um, I'm sure it, other people do know what you're talking about. So I don't always have to know what's going on. Um, Sandra says, yes, elves. And Vampire says, yes to elves and trying to persuade housemate I need the project as well as the calendar. Oh, bless. Um, Ashley says, yes, that 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 right one. Oh yes that right one that's it yeah that was the one the the pumpkin that i showed awkward prawn says making along but little ones fancy making a wreath of pumpkins mushrooms and leaves oh that likes i like that idea of that and i yeah, tell you what else you could add in how about a few groovy 
ghosts. This is a live stream from last year that you can still watch. Um, you'll probably find lots of bloopers in. There you go. I think I have found out why I can't hear Emma because she's really quiet. Well, I've got to turn her up. Okay, I must say all of that again because I've no idea what you said. Um, right, here we go. Pa um, sorry, I've, I've done double faces on these ghosts because I was um, practicing faces. But uh, they could be really, they could be a nice addition to your wreath, um, which um, is what um, Awkward Prawn suggested. So yeah, let's get let's get some uh, groovy groovy decorations done, and um, I think my pumpkin so far is probably as much as I want to do on this right now. So you um, you can see you can make a quite a quick shape. Definitely use the trick with the yarn. You can go even bigger. So some of the project that 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 um, we've made in the past, like Ginger Ninja the Giant Chicken, she's had um, the 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 insides tied. <laughs> And um, I'm going to tell Emma now to draw a winner, which um, will take us to the end of this live stream. So go ahead, Emma, draw a winner now, and I will sit here and stab this pumpkin until you tell me who has won um, the hedgehog pack. And of course, on Thursday, um, Hannah will draw a winner now and let you know, and she will let you know in the comments who has won our hedgehog pack. And the hedgehog pack, just to remind you, it comes with, it looks like this, it comes with um, the wool that you need, it comes with the hedgehog spikes, which is a mohair fabric, it comes with full instructions and the template. So we used, to, we've done these hedgehog packs for a long time, but they never had proper instructions in them, so they now have got step-by-step -step color instructions in our usual style. You also get the eyes in there. The only sad thing about this is that these packs have, have we had to put up um, really hugely in price because the hedgehog fabric has gone up more than twice in price um, over the last um, 12 months. It's really bad. So bad for you, bad for us, bad for everybody, bad for hedgehogs. Um, just not bad for the supply, I suppose. But um, yeah, th that's unfortunate that it's become a lot more expensive. But you can win yourself one in a minute. So, and I'm going to stop a little bit more here. Have I forgotten to tell you anything? I've told you about the next live stream st streams. You've got all of that. I've told you about the sub boxes. Um, we've got some new products that are lurking. We're going to have a a, um, a wren. A needle felting kit that's coming up. We're going to many, many shows starting at the end of this month. So if you're anywhere near um, the Southwest Exeter, the B Birmingham NEC, um, London Ali Pali, um, Harrogate in Yorkshire, or oops, sorry, um, or in Glasgow, you will. Be not will be have a, you will have a chance to come and see us and we will be doing um, the two knitting and stitching shows we will be doing the two country living um, shows we will be doing the three creative craft shows and um, um, the craft for crafter show as well and um, after all of that by the end of the year I'm probably going to be ready to have um, a big break at Christmas we are also getting ready for two more fundraising projects, one with um, the Cuts Protection. And um, the Cuts Protection is going to be at the end of November. And we've, we now can also be, um, we can also announce now that by the end of October, we have got a new charity that we're supporting. And I'll keep it a little bit longer as a secret. I'll tell you next week. But um, by the end of October, you can sign up for another workshop. And um, I just give you one clue, one clue. Uh, woof! That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, we've got a winner. Um, here on the live stream, which is um, the YouTube live stream. And um, that is Patricia, Patricia A. You've won yourself a hedgehog pack to make one of these cute hedgehogs. You just need to use your own tools. And of course, on Thursday, um, it will be somebody else. But that's a big surprise. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring just doing a white, a white shape. It's like, it's, like a, it's like an anonymous face, something like that. Um, but it will be, it will all be, um, all be exciting next week. Just have a quick look and then, um, uh, let's have a look. 
what is the other make along group called, please? So the 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 group that is going to do the little pumpkin, where well, I'm going to do the little pumpkin, is the the um the original needle felting UK autumn festival. I think maybe Emma can pop this in the in the uh, comments here. Um, we ha we have shared this before on our Facebook page as well. So if you join our if you if you join our Everyone a Maker group, it will be on there. You can see a link on there, and um, we also share these things on our main page. So remember to give us a a big big like on our main page as well. We are coming up to nearly ten thousand followers, which is an absolute uh, amazing achievement. We're also on Instagram, where we're um have a less of a presence there, but we're trying. And um, so do do wherever you are, go and subscribe. If you see the makers, just subscribe. It it can't be you can't go wrong. And of course, we do have a monthly newsletter as well, which you can sign up for and um by going onto our website. And remember, we're spelled with two S's, ww.themakers with two S's.co.uk. And I think oh Sandra says she calls her female ginger cat ginger ninja. Well, ginger ninja, our chicken was actually named by one of our customers, and um and she, she's definitely a ginger ninja. Um, that's it. So, um, oh yes, it does look like an igloo. Um, Ashley, that's, that's true. An igloo. It's not an igloo. It's going to be a pumpkin, I promise you. And it will be absolutely amazing. I know it will be. So take care, everybody. Thank you very much for watching today. And, um, I will see you all next week and, um, stay safe and enjoy the last rays of sunshine before it turns into, um, windy spells and rain and gray days and, um, dark days and dark mornings and dark evenings. So go out and catch that sunlight now. Take care. Bye, everybody.